I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll discuss about the symbol which we should use for integers. The bold Z is normally used, however, there is a lot of confusion about when to include zero, when not to include zero, how about non-negative integers? How about the positive integers, right? That gives a bit of complexity in the usage of the symbol for integers. Another question is, what is the sign of zero? Now, these are two questions which are always there in students' mind. And we should be absolutely clear as to what does that sign of zero means. Sometimes we do write zero with positive superscript, sometimes zero with negative superscript, sometimes just zero. Does it have a sign? Very important question. We are going to answer both these questions in this particular video. Now let's look into the integers first. Well, you know about the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, right? The symbol for that is capital N as shown here. Now, whenever you see a line in between, right? So normally we write N. Now, to make it bold, we kind of put another line. Because writing on a paper, a bold letter is kind of difficult. So this line makes it look better. And this is, in a way, you can write like this, N bold, right? Just to make it a symbol for the natural numbers. For the whole numbers, we use W, and I have simply written W as a bold letter. So if you have a bold letter, then it may signify the set of numbers. If it is N, set of natural numbers. If it is W, set of whole numbers. The only difference between the whole numbers and the natural numbers is that the whole numbers includes zero. That is kind of very critical. Sometimes it is a confusion, right? We talk about numbers, the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we mix it up with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Whenever 0 is included, then it is now not the set of natural numbers, but the set of whole numbers. Perfect. Now, I would like to define another set of numbers, which I call negative numbers, right? So these negative numbers are additive inverse of natural numbers. What I try to say here is that if I have a number 7, then the additive inverse means if I add minus 7 to this, you get 0. Correct? Similarly, I could have 2. When you add minus 2 to it, then you get 0. So these are the additive inverse, right? To which set do they belong? Well, they belong to integers, right? So we come up with this set of integers, which actually includes the positive natural numbers, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, includes the 0, and also the negative numbers, which are, strictly speaking, additive inverse of the natural numbers. So on a number line, you could say that we have included the natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like this, right? So on the right side of the origin, so those are the natural numbers. When we include 0, it becomes a set of whole numbers. We also include the negative numbers, which when added to the natural numbers can result in 0. And therefore, they're called additive inverse. So now you understand, when we talk about integers, we include the positive numbers, the negative numbers, and zero. You see that? So distinctly, we are saying that zero is neither positive nor negative. Very important. In the definition itself, we are saying on either side. On the right-hand side, we have these positive numbers, correct? And on the left-hand side, we have the negative numbers in between 0, which does not have any sign. 
Is that clear? Perfect. What I'm trying to say here is that positive 3, if I write, it has a positive sign, right? And the number value is 3. So positive 3 has two parts. When I write positive 3, it has two, two parts in it. And one of them is the sign, right? And the other one is the value, correct? So value of positive 3 is 3. And the sign is positive. You get the idea, correct? So when we say the value of the number, we may say just the magnitude of that number, the absolute value, right? So that is what we're trying to say. 0, for that matter, has this value of 0 without any sign. Is that clear to you? So if I write minus 7, it really means negative sign, right? It is a negative sign and the value is 7. Just number 5. If I do not write positive or negative, just a number, it means by default that the sign is positive. Correct. So what I'm trying to say here is that you could write positive 5, which is exactly the same as only 5 also. So you need not write positive sign for a positive number. It is taken as a default. Now when we talk about 0, remember 0 is neither positive nor negative, right? This is very important to understand, right? So on a number line, the integers can be represented by 0, which does not have any sign. The natural numbers on the right hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4, and their additive inverse on the left hand side, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. Is this clear to you? Perfect. Let's take up an example, example 1. The question here is, how many of 3, 0 0.2, minus 5, 0, 100, plus 7, half, pi, square root 2, are not signed integers? Remember, are not signed integers. Options are given, 1 to 5. What do you think is the correct option? We are looking for how many of these integers you could always write in a curly bracket just to say we're interested in this group of numbers, the set of numbers. How many of these are not signed integers, right? So I think you got the answer. What do you think? Four or five? Well, not signed are what? There are two things in this. One is not signed and second is integers, right? So, okay. So even the numbers which are not integers will be included in our list. So they are like 0 0.2 is not an integer. 0 does not have a sign, correct? Half is not an integer. Pi is an irrational number, just as square root 2 is, right? So these are all these numbers, right? So we have uh, the number 0 0.1, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the correct answer is E. Is that clear to you? Not signed integers. So we'll include 0, which just doesn't have a sign, and the other numbers, which are not integers, correct? Now, we will talk about the sign of 0, right? I just said that 0 does not have any sign, correct? Now, you will notice that on a number line, we normally represent 0 in almost the middle, right? In many applications, we are, we are looking for what has happened what is happening to the characteristics or the behavior of something near zero, right? So let's go very close to zero, right? So if you are approaching from the left-hand side, this is my left-hand side, in that case, we know this part is negative. However, if you approach from the right-hand side, then that part is positive, correct? So, if you are very, very close to 0, on the left side or on the right side, 0 could have a value which is positive or negative. You get the idea, right? For example, if I have a number which is like 0 0.00001, correct? Now, this is 
approaching 0 from the right hand side. This is slightly greater than 0. We'll call this as a positive 0 since it has a sign. If you round it to three significant figures, right? If you round it to three significant figures, what do you get? You get zero, correct? But this zero is positive. So when you are approaching from the right hand side in your answer, you may get positive zero. That indicates that you are not at zero, very close to it. An application to this is, let us say we have this particular function, 1 over x. Do you see that behavior? Now this is approaching 0, right? It is not quite there, but this is approaching 0 from the positive side. On the other hand, we could have a curve which is like this, which is again approaching 0, but from the negative side. The value, of course, is plus infinity. Here, approaching, I should say, in this case, approaching negative infinity. But that is, when we are very, very close to zero, and in that case, we say zero has a sign. So when we are within a boundary, right, in that boundary, the left-hand side of the boundary has a negative sign for zero, and the right-hand side has the positive sign. So we do write zero with positive and negative. So that is what I want to emphasize. So yes, 0 is an integer without sign. However, 0 plus when we write, it means a positive 0 when approaching from the right hand side. And 0 with negative is the negative 0 when approaching from the left hand side. For example, left hand side will be what? Well, it will be 0 0.9999. Do you see that? to three significant figures, this will round to what? This will round to zero point, uh, let us say this is minus, right? So zero point, uh, in that case, let me write like this, minus zero point zero 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 one. Now this is zero for three significant figures. All the measurements are normally done accurate to some significant figures, right? So in that case, this zero, will have a negative sign. So it depends to what decimal place you're looking at. And in that case, a zero might have a sign. You get the idea, right? Okay, now let's get back to the symbol for integers. As I said, z written with double bar here, right? So as I was saying, that is made so that on the blackboard earlier, when teachers were writing the symbols, how could they make it bold? So they came up with this innovative idea of a double line. It looks nice, right? So therefore, it gets its name also as a blackboard bold. So it is made bold on the blackboard by writing that diagonal in two lines. Or you could just write a bold face Z, which is going to represent integers. So integers are represented by this letter Z. Well, what you should know is that Z comes from a German word, Zellen. Now that word actually means numbers in German language. So that is the origin of this particular word. So you see that the symbol for integer is a Z with double line or a bold z and that represents the set of integers means the negative which are additive inverse of the natural numbers the positive natural numbers and the zero which does not have a sign correct so that part is known and very clear to almost everyone the confusion really arises when we look into these terms non-negative integers what does that mean and what is the symbol for non-negative means we're looking for integers which are not negative. So these integers which are not negative, non-negative integers will, oh this is non-zero right, sorry. So we're looking for non-zero integers. That means only positive and negative. So we have a zero which is not included but we are including the integers on the other side. So if it is not including zero, 
in that case what are these integers written as so they are written as z and not equal to that sign not equal to on the superscript signifies that it does not include zero it only includes the signed numbers right so this is only signed numbers is that clear to you right so it does not include zero so we put that equal to with a crux not equal to okay so the next one here is z with plus that means we are looking for positive integers positive integers will exclude all the negative integers for sure but they also exclude zero since zero is not counted with a sign so positive integers are integers which have positive sign so z plus is positive integer and z with a greater than symbol on the top also represents positive integers is that clear to you now similarly we have negative integers negative integers exclude zero for sure but we'll have all the additive inverse and it's represented by z with a minus sign as a superscript now if you want to include zero then what well we call them non-negative integers non-negative integers means we are excluding all the integers which have negative sign now zero does not have a sign it will not be excluded you get it and therefore we do have a symbol for there for the zero being included with the positive numbers and the symbol is zero with z with zero plus in superscript or z with greater than or equal to sign let me rewrite this so z with let me write double that's better zero plus or bold z with greater than equal to means include zero so these are non-negative integers so these are the signs for integers under different circumstances so i hope with this it is absolutely clear that in the vicinity of zero we might have zero plus and zero minus as their boundaries right we are approaching zero from either side as far as the symbol for integer is concerned we have different symbols with subscripts and superscripts which sometimes will include only the negative integers or only the positive integers or will include zero and the positive integers that is to say non-negative integers correct or also we have a symbol for all the integers but zero you get the idea right so let's uh, look into an example on this the example here is which of the following will include zero now can you tell me which of the following will include zero we have these five options for you which will include zero well i think you guessed it right it is the bold zero with zero plus as a superscript that includes zero right all of the symbols given here do not include zero is that clear now let's look into example three which is which of the following will not include zero will not include zero so which will not include zero z with greater than equal to will include zero z with zero plus will include zero just z is all the integers but when we write positive then we are only looking into the positive integers right zero is excluded so that is the solution for this so in this case it is option d and earlier it was option c so i hope with this you clearly understand what integer signs could be can zero have a sign if yes how right thanks for your time and all the best